Anytime they have a pole arm, you've got to be careful, you know. They're going to just stop you in your tracks like they did just to me. And that's usually a death sentence, pretty much, you know. That's usually complete death. As soon as... I like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't have one episode without me dying. I think it is literally just a... Um, it's a feature. Hello and welcome back to the Ronin. We have a little situation on our hands, which I'm not particularly pleased about, to be honest. We have a peace declaration. Yeah, it seems a bit weird for me to be, um, yeah, a bit irritated by a peace agreement. But, yeah, it's actually going to interfere with my future plans quite dramatically. Anyway, I was attempting to take Danustika, as you can quite clearly tell. The defenders have been... A little diminished they had about 800 in there so it wasn't really that significant of a siege it didn't actually go in there manually or anything like that I literally just spent a very short time and that was pretty much it just you know bombarding the walls a little bit and so on but now what I was attempting to do before the peace declaration came up was I was trying to go and basically just take out everyone in the area just try and uh, auto resolve with everyone in the area try to weaken the southern empire uh, by a decent amount and I was hopeful that maybe we could continue the war against them and oh look at that a lot of really really nice troops right there gonna take these prisoners too just in case you know maybe I'll be able to sell them or convert them or something like that i think we actually leveled up as well yeah as you can see byron actually leveled up so i'm going to be probably leveling up something like i don't know maybe tactics no morale penalty uh decreases disorganized time by 50 percent. what a crazy crazy skill that is i'm actually going to go for that and then we'll have to spec our attribute point into something as well. So I'm not entirely sure what we're going to spec into, to be fair. Mm, maybe we want to go for some more intelligence so we can get 250 in steward. But then again, steward skill doesn't really give us anything amazing. I mean, troop wages being decreased by 25%. I mean, who cares about that when money is quite easy to come by at this point in the game? And obviously medicine is pretty good. Losses to siege bombardment, 50% chance of getting wounded instead of getting killed. That sounds really good, actually. 30% increased chance to recover lethal wounds in siege assaults? What does that mean? That's actually kind of interesting because lethal wounds? I, I'm not entirely sure what that means because I guess that could mean... Our companions? Maybe if our companions are being killed and they suffer a fatality or something like that, then that's going to make a pretty big difference. All right, so 30% chance per day to recover a lame horse and 50% chance to recover a mount from lost cavalry after battles. All right, okay. Well, um, I, I guess that seems pretty good, so I guess we'll go for intelligence. I mean, you know, having more engineering skills is also pretty good, so, you know, not the perks, so to speak, but the um, the skills themselves are pretty nice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in here against one of these. I don't really care who, to be honest. I'm basically just wanting to uh, try and level up our, our units, try to get more people to be converted to our side so that I can then provide more, more, in, in, more units to our, um, to our people. Because as you can see, this is going to be resolved in four hours. And I don't really want to resolve it in a forced manner. So I'm just going to see if I can maybe take these guys out. Yep, there we go. All right, let's do it. We're actually going to go in here manually because this is a pretty significant um, pretty significant force of Southern Empire vassals. And bear in mind that Urzina Castle is also under siege by the Crusade. And um, yeah, I, that's the thing. I Personally, I think of the Crusade as being probably one of the least enjoyable factions to fight against. And... I'm not saying that to be, you know, contrary or to, you know, say something uh, controversial or whatever. It's just literally how I feel about that particular faction. It is kind of, uh, I don't know, I think it's kind of difficult to offer any kind of counterplay to their forces. I think it's very difficult to make any kind of strategy work against them unless you just have insane amounts of archers, insane amounts of spearmen, and then you just get lucky with what they decide to do, because and also their compositions, of course. Um, so it doesn't really provide you any kind of 
strategy in that regard, you know, because you're basically just rolling the dice up against them. And yeah, sure, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure that some of you are going to say now, you know, you're going to say something in the comments like, uh, well, if you did this, uh, you know, if you did A, B, and C, then you'd be able to do, you know, this, and then you'd be fine. And yeah, more than likely that is probably the case, but usually when someone suggests something like that, I'm, I'm always like, well, yeah, but that requires this, and then it also requires that, and it also requires that the person doing those things is actually somewhat competent, which... You know me, I'm not particularly, so it's also that. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, uh, the Crusade are not that enjoyable to fight against, which is actually kind of sad, because I actually find a lot of the factions in Bannerlord to be pretty cool and uh, pretty interactive. They've got a lot of really nice variety to their units, but fighting a force that is primarily cavalry and has an overwhelming amount of combat strength most of the time is a little tedious. So if anything, I mean, they're not going to rework any of the factions. I mean, obviously they're not going to rework them, um, but I would I would probably say that the Kuzate could probably use a little bit of a rework um, although, that's the thing, it's funny because they do have infantry and they also have archers that are capable of running around on foot. So they're not only cavalry and they're not forced into being cavalry like they, uh, well, like the, so we, shall we say, like the Kurgid Khanate were in Warband. Because, of course, in Warband, you could only have mounted units as the highest tier with the Kurgids. And while that is a pretty surefire way to forge some kind of faction identity for these guys. Um, it was somewhat difficult to get them to really work, if you know what I mean. Because in sieges they would be pretty useless, and in field battles they would be kings, pretty much. And so it's one of those things. It's kind of like a bit of a status quo kind of thing, because you could never really do that much with them in uh, in terms of taking territory unless you had a significant numbers advantage this is in warband of course um and yeah i don't know it's just a, a little bit of a weird spot to be in but the kuzate just appear to have pretty much everything that you could ever want from a faction and it is very difficult to kind of counter them in any way Unless you have, as I say, a critical mass of a particular kind of unit. Which is, uh, I'm not going to say unlikely, but I would definitely say it's more difficult. So, yeah, well, whatever the case, there we go. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a rant to start this episode. I do apologize if you found that annoying. It's not, it's not my intention to be annoying, obviously. It's literally just a, a little bit of discussion. And uh, maybe you'd like to provide me with your thoughts on the Kuzate, because I personally feel like the AI is way too strong with them. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what can be done about them, to be honest. Because, let's face it, if you're playing on a high campaign AI setting like I am, I'm playing on the highest setting that you can. Obviously, there's only three settings, so it doesn't really, you know, it's not really that big a deal. But still, um, I am doing that. So if you're playing on that, it's going to make the enemy's parties exceptionally good in terms of their unit compositions. Their unit compositions are all going to be fantastic. They're going to have an overabundance of heavy horse archers and any number of other things that are going to be blowing a lot of other units out of the water, pretty much. So that's the kind of thing that I'm a little bit mm, in two minds about, because the AI can pretty much go to anywhere as the Kuzate, and they can be like, okay, we're going to take this, and then they take it, and that's it. And there you go. So <laughs> that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. There's no counterplay there. There's no chance for any other faction to come up with some kind of strategy to defeat them because most of the other factions are not going to have a critical mass of the unit that they need to make it possible to beat them in an auto-resolve situation because their combat strength with all those cavalry is too great. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, we're going to agree with Hanzo here and actually say that we're not going to make peace. Okay, apparently that didn't make any difference.
that is actually really strange, in my opinion, because look at that. Hanzo of the Tessagen has decided to make peace with the Southern Empire with his council evenly divided. We were at 51%. Technically, 51 wins the vote, as we know. Uh, don't remind me. Anyway, here we go. There we go. That's it. Done. They've now made peace with these absolute imbeciles. And now we are going to have some problems because now I'm going to have to choose which prisoners have to be ransomed. And we're going to be choosing mostly Azurai. Actually, we're going to be choosing mostly high tier units. So all these guys can go. Uh, we're going to get some nice roguery skill as a result of this. But most of the other people are going to be persuaded to join us. At least I hope so. Even the Tetsujin I'm going to be getting rid of because I can't persuade them in any way. I could potentially put them into a garrison, but I don't think the garrison actually converts these kinds of units. So I'm just going to put them in there. And um, there we have it. Look at that. 15,000. 15, That's insane. And we still only gained five skill points. I guess it's just because we have, well, so little points in roguery skill at the moment. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so we've made peace with the Southern Empire, so that's basically, eh, I guess it's alright. Not really what I wanted, but okay. You know, I can't really help it. If the AI wants to do that, then the AI is going to do that. Anyway, we're at 51, so we now have the ability to choose another perk in the roguery tree. Okay, 50% better chance of success with disguise missions. Convert bandit prisoners without suffering morale penalty. That actually might be kind of good, but we are at 100 morale, even though I just converted some prisoners, I think, just a little bit of time ago. I'm not entirely sure what kind of morale penalty it is anyway. Double the amount... Ooh, double the amount of betting you can use in tournaments? Now that's an interesting benefit. Yes. I like this. This is this is good. I applaud the developers for deciding on something like this. This is very nice because I can just imagine the duelist with this. You know, my previous character build, which I regrettably had to stop due to technical issues. I just couldn't continue with any kind of siege defense for some reason. But anyway, this is really good for that because the duelist was a character that would go into tournaments and try to win as many as potentially possible to earn a good amount of renown earn a lot of money and so on and so forth i was obviously playing without um, banner lord tweaks at that point so the default amount of money that i could bet was pretty low but still that's pretty nice. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm not going to take this one where we double the amount of betting because I'm never really going to go into a tournament. I'm just going to take Two-Faced instead um, because that is going to help us to lose less morale. I don't know how useful that is really, but we're going to go for it anyway. Okay. So, Odrisa Castle. I'm going to just go in there real fast. We're going to be putting my prisoners in here. There we go. I'm going to put them all in there. W wait, wait a minute. What happened? Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I just missed pressed on the uh, on the little arrow thing. That's hilarious. Oh, I was just like, "What? Where do they go?" You know, that was that was funny. Okay, so let me actually just take a quick look here. I want to make sure that I'm taking everything that I want. I really don't have enough um, enough units to be honest. I need more. Uh, yeah, I have basically nothing in the garrison here that I really want to take. What about Onira? Because here's the thing. I'd like to take Urzana Castle back, but it's going to be... Um, oh, income from parties. Oh, yeah, that's because we just sold a bunch of prisoners, I assume. But yeah, um, Onira... Oh, hello, Hurunag. Uh, this, might be, this might be a good test, actually, because as far as I can tell so far, it seems extremely unlikely that even with my current army composition that I would be able to defeat an army such as theirs. And that shows how, well, somewhat imbalanced the Kuzate actually are. So let me actually just see whether I can do something here. I'm going to just wait here for some time. Where are they going? Oh, it seems like so. Oh, Hanzo was defeated. Are you serious, Hanzo? Why did you do that? Uh, yes, seems like that seems to be a... Rather common occurrence nowadays that uh, the Tetsujin... What? This Tetsujin vessel got, got, what? got taken prisoner? Oh, no, never mind. It's just a mercenary. But um, still, being taken prisoner by looters? I mean, come on. That is absolutely embarrassing. All right. 
Let's do this. We're going to go in against Huronag. I'm not even looking at their army composition because no doubt they have literally over, I don't know, over 50 heavy horse archers, huge amounts of lances and all that kind of stuff. So we're, 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 we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look. So let's see here. All right. Look at their combat strength. It's it's so good, even though we outnumber them so dramatically. That is hilarious. Okay. Let me take a look here then. Okay. They don't have any heavy horse archers. They've just got what? Two? Yeah. They just have two? That doesn't make sense. That's just his. That's just his, uh, his army, I assume. Yeah. That's just his army. Okay. So what else do these people have? 16, 3, 2, so they've got 21, and then they have a lot of heavy lances and a lot of dark hands and stuff like that. So they've got about 30 of each unit, I guess, or maybe maybe 50 of the lances. Technically, I could leave, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We're going to go in there. We're going to go in there and we're going to see what we can do. This is a terrible map. I don't like it. <laughs> Apparently... <laughs> Apparently today's episode is a bit of a grumpy episode. I'm not particularly grumpy right now, so I'm not entirely sure why, but I seem to be complaining about a lot of things, so I apologize for that. But, you know, I mean, this is okay, actually. This map is all right. It's not too bad. I thought to myself, yeah, this is going to be pretty awful for us because uh, horses are, um, well, they're, they're going to have a pretty difficult time with the, with the trees and everything. So I guess that's pretty decent, but they're charging at us straight away, which I'm not particularly a fan of. So let's just tell my infantry to charge in, tell my horse archers and my cavalry to charge in as well. It may say horse archers twice there, but you know the reasoning for that. Anyway, we're going to see if we can maybe just kill a couple of the enemy's cavalry and then force them to retreat. Bear in mind that I really do not want to die here, so I will try my very best just to do a little bit of damage here and there. Nice. Oh, that was some nice damage. 70 damage. I like it. Nice. Okay, even even little bits of damage. I don't care whether I get the kill. That's the point. Don't care whether I get the kill. I literally just want to deal damage. That is the most efficient way of playing the game, at least in my opinion, because that means that one of your other units is going to be able to finish off the guy just that much faster and easier. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move into a position like this, where we're going to be on a slope. And this is probably the best location for an army such as ours because we're not gonna utilize our cavalry too much because our cavalry is actually primarily horse archer based so we're not really going to have too many difficulties with dealing damage with them okay the enemy oh dear ah uh, yeah we're gonna have to bring these guys back yeah, I let my uh, <laughs> I let my horse archers go a little bit too far. That was not good. Okay, let's just tell my guys to come over here. I kind of that's the thing. I kind of want the enemy to come to us, but I don't think they're gonna do that. Are they actually coming back? Because I have told them to come back. Yeah, there we go. They're finally starting to come back now. Interesting. But yeah, it seems like the enemy is just holding position there. I wonder how long it would take before they actually started to move towards us. I doubt they would do that at all, to be honest. They seem to always be extremely stubborn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think they're actually going to be coming towards us. Uh, they might? Maybe? No? No, no, I don't think they will. So this is indeed the uh, slight issue about um, the AI as well. They do tend to do that quite often where they basically just don't, they don't really care to move forward, which is somewhat irritating, but I guess we can't really prevent them from uh, doing that. Nice. Oh, <laughs> that was nice. Very, very satisfying to take these guys down. Ooh, nice. We got him off his mount and we dealt some significant damage. So that's pretty good too. Okay. Let's 
So this is, this is really just playing into what they want right now, which is the main reason why I didn't want to do that. But, um... <laughs> Ah, uh, he also dealt massive damage to me as well with just some random attack. Ah, uh, of course. Of course he did. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, well. What can you do? What can you do? Alright. Let's get ready then. Let's get ready for our inevitable attack here. This is, this is actually kind of... Mm, not a big fan of this. Cavalry! Forward! Oh, that was nice. Okay, we're actually doing quite well in terms of um, actually hitting with my pole arm in this episode. I'm surprised. Seems like I'm, I've got a pretty good handle on the uh, the whole timing of things right now. So that's really helping us out a great deal. And can I tell my um, my infantry to move forward? Seems like I can, but I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, to be honest. Let's tell my horse archers and my cavalry to charge in now as well. It seems like the enemy is also charging. So we'll see what happens here. Right. Okay. Uh, I think the enemy's cavalry is charging straight on into our archers, which is actually not bad. That is not too difficult for us to deal with. And it seems like the... Enemy infantry are charging straight on into our infantry. Oh, also the archers? What? You see that? They actually have their archers intermingled with their infantry right now. That is the reason why they're going to lose this battle. I don't know what it is, but the game seems to always just listen to me or something like that. Because it, it's just hilarious. I'm, I'm talking them up. The entire episode basically saying how strong the crusade are and that they're almost undefeatable and then all of a sudden they just go and make a silly tactical decision like that where they send their their archers in at the same time it doesn't make any sense oh well oh no no it seems like they're fighting back now no no they're definitely fighting back now okay okay scratch that <laughs> Scratch that. As you can no doubt tell, they're, they're dealing some pretty good damage to us. And I'm just going to try and get a little bit more pole arm skill and a little bit more experience. I think we're probably going to achieve victory here, so I don't need to worry too much. Um, as you can see, so many cavalry. It's crazy. Okay, I don't really want to get killed just yet, if at all possible. Yeah. Ooh, he got knocked off his mount. I don't, I don't know whether he was killed, but he did get knocked off his mount, and I was just about to go pokey pokey on him. Ah, careful. <laughs> uh, you never know, you know. You never know when that's going to happen. Wait, wait, see, this is the... Oh, look, see, there you go. I went right through that tree. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I guess they save on resources by making some of the trees, you know, I mean performance resources that is, by making some of the trees non-interactable. But it is a um, rather amusing, <laughs> rather amusing attribute for the trees to have sometimes because you think to yourself, oh no, I'm going to crash into this tree and then all of a sudden you just pass right through it, which is perfectly fine with me, you know. <laughs> It really makes a big difference to the smoothness of the fight, of course, if you, you know, if you could sometimes do that, but you obviously don't know which trees are see through and which are not, or shall we say, possible. Anyway, I think that is indeed a victory for us, and we have, in my opinion at least, quite significantly injured the Kuzate's combat strength, but of course I don't know what their total combat strength is at the moment. I knew what the Southern Empire's was. We were only about a thousand ahead of them, so we really didn't have anything to brag about. But I'm very thankful that we were able to defeat them, and we did only suffer 52 casualties in total, which I suppose is okay. But you can see here that they eliminated half of our units, which was was pretty good, you know? To be expected, really. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be taking all of them prisoner. Basically, every single one of them I will be taking prisoner. Including the regular units. And we'll take all of the loot as well.
And then we're going to see what their combat strength is on the diplomacy screen or something like that. No, Gavin! Gavin got killed? Where do his units go? Are they... Are they serious about that? There, uh, there, there are his units. Ah, oh, phew. Ah, oh, okay. I was about to say something. I really was. I was about to, I, you know, you know me. I was about to rant about it a little bit, you know. Not too much, but I was about to rant about it and basically say, why do they not join me? But there you go. You can actually get them to join you. So I suppose it's not that big a deal. But still, you know. Anyway, let's go into the uh, dungeon here once again. I'm just going to place all my prisoners in there. I don't think they have any Tetsujin, do they? Mm, no. Seems like they don't have any of those. So that is absolutely fine. We'll just put them all in there. And I'm going to take some more units out of the garrison here. I don't I don't want to use Imperials, you see. I don't want to use Imperials. I only want to use Tetsujin units. So I'm not going to be taking anything else here, unfortunately. I'd like to because it's going to help us quite a great deal. But I don't really want to because it's then going to compromise the theme. Yes, the all-important theme of the series, of course. Oh, I am actually using Imperials. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's because I just took in Gavin's... Um, Gavin's units. Okay, good to know. <laughs> good to know. Alright, well, we can give a huge amount to Mr. Nogand here, so shouldn't be too bad, but I'm thinking, yeah, actually we can't even give him that many. That's uh, 40, so we can only give him another 4. And there we go. Okay, that's pretty much all I can give him. And I'm going to take these looters, actually, because the looters are being pretty useless for him. So we're just going to take them. And how is she doing as well? She has 132. So she, technically she could take some more stuff. I'm going to level up these looters. And we're going to give her the Imperial Infantryman from those looters. And then we'll... I think that's it actually. Yep, that is indeed all that I can give her. Great. Uh, right, okay. Well, I guess what I'll do is I'll just place the remaining... Azurai Imperial units in the garrison here. Wow, there's actually a huge amount of them as well. And I need to buy some more war horses. As you can see, my rogue trainers are all ready to level up, and I need many, many war horses to make that work. Oh no, are you serious? It's going to be very difficult for me to get those. <sighs> okay, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so we have Corinia Castle right there. I'm wondering whether I should just go ahead and just take that straight up really really fast we have declared war against the Azurai, as you can see as well so that's going to be a bit of a problem because the kuzata already being kind of irritating for us so i'm not entirely sure what we're going to do about it anyway we've got a number of war horses right here which i'll be able to take which is always good and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to sell a bunch of armor here all the very very low tier armor that isn't really going to be that useful for anyone in particular we're just going to get rid of all of that Look at this. Look at this. It's crazy the amount that you can actually acquire from all these people. It's absolutely insane. And I'm going to go into the tavern here as well because there might actually be someone that I could make into an army leader. Andros the Silent? Is he one of mine? I think he is actually. Is he? No. Apparently not. Right. Okay. Well, join me then, I guess. <laughs> he just invited himself basically let's just let's just go with that as um as the reason for him joining he is the silence so maybe he just nodded to me or something like that and i was like yes join me sir all right so let me uh let me give him some good stuff then uh i have no w wait a minute i have no idea what is actually good for him to get oh wait a minute southern lord helm yeah let's give him one of those seems good tetsujin pauldrons give him some of these and uh, he has no gloves on at the moment, so let's give him some of those. And he needs some boots. Where are the boots? Yeah, there we go. All right. Fantastic. Okay, and now we should give him a large round shield, and we should then give him a weapon. But what kind of weapon, you ask? Well, we'll probably give him something like this. Perfect. All right. So what is he actually good at? I need to check that. He's good at... Ah, he's actually good at riding. 
Cool. I like it. I like it. Okay, so and he's actually got 60 in leadership too, so that's pretty good. Anyway, let's give him a horse. He can actually use an Azurai horse as well, so we'll give him one of those. And we even have a chain horse harness if we wanted to give him one of those, but I'm actually going to take that for myself because this is a pretty substantial upgrade. Wait a minute. Yep, there it is. Yeah, that's a substantial upgrade. Very nice indeed. We have a Step War Horse. Is this actually as good as the Azurai Horse, by the way? As you can see, it gives me more speed. Actually, a pretty significant amount more speed, but it is going to result in less HP. And... Mm, I mean, the, the speed increase is so dramatic. It gives us 16 more speed, so I'm actually going to use the Azurai Horse instead of the other one. All right, that is looking pretty good. Okay, so uh, where where are the Azurai now dealing with us? Okay, they, they still have a massive amount of territory. The Kuzait really do need to be taken down a peg or two, though. So I'm going to continue to focus on them for the moment. And then when we make peace with them, inevitably, at the worst possible moment, then we'll do something about it. But you can see here that the um, Tetsujin's combat strength is utterly appalling. And the Kuzait are insane once again. I'm actually not entirely sure why this is even happening, to be fair. Because, as far as I remember, a couple of episodes ago, the Tetsujin were doing perfectly fine. And we had no problems whatsoever. But then all of a sudden, it has now turned around a complete 180. And now we are the ones on the back foot. So I'm not entirely sure what's happening with that. Anyway, we're going to be making Andros into a party. Let's do that right now. There he is. And then we're going to give him a bunch of units. Actually, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I need to go to my garrison and I completely forgot. Ah, uh, no. And now I've made him into a party. Wait a minute. Can you join me? Uh, um, okay, you know what? I'm just going to give him a bunch of these guys. And just give him, just give him some of these. There we go. Join my army. Because <laughs> I, I basically formed his party out in the middle of nowhere with no units. That would have been awful. He would have just gotten murdered almost instantaneously. That would have been terrible. Okay, let's go into the garrison. I'm just going to take really, really high tier units. Basically, I have no reason not to take high tier units at this point. I'm just going to give huge amounts of high tier units to him. And it doesn't really matter which ones they are or anything like that. So we're just going to give him a whole bunch of these. And that will be that. I would like ideally to give every single one of my units Tetsujin units but unfortunately we don't live in an ideal world and I do not have access to them currently and I'm going to need to make some concessions to be able to make this work because otherwise it is going to be incredibly difficult for me to get any kind of um, substantial resistance going on against these rather powerful factions currently attempting to attack us so we're just going to do that there we go Perfect, and I think everyone else has some pretty uh, decent stuff, so we don't really need to worry about anyone else. And we can basically just put all the rest back in the garrison. And I think that is indeed it. Ah, uh, Azurai, there we go. That one almost snuck by me right there. Almost, almost. Not quite, though. Thank you very much. Okay, so we now have a bunch of people that can also level up. These guys all need war horses to level up, so that is somewhat irritating in itself. Even though I completely understand that that needs to be a requirement. Oh, wow. I leveled up a whole bunch. I leveled up a whole bunch of those. Okay, so that's fantastic. All right, we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. We've got a good amount of money, good amount of influence. My army is basically uh, pr probably one of the strongest it's ever been at this point. And we're now going to go in here and try to deal some damage to this garrison. Now, I think someone actually did mention in the comments of uh, one of the previous episodes, and indeed asked a question, why did I build the siege... Oh, dear. <laughs> why did I build the siege tower and the battering ram and all that stuff if I'm not going to use them and I'm going to batter down the, the walls and stuff like that? Well, I think I mentioned in that episode specifically that the reason why I do that is for a backup plan. Because if someone appears and I only have trebuchets built or whatever, then I can just go in for an auto-resolve really fast um, or, or something along those lines. Like, for example, right now, if I had more than the battering ram and I had these two siege towers already built, 
then I'd be able to basically auto-resolve here. I could pretty much auto-resolve anyway, but I don't really want to because that's going to result in many more casualties than I would like. And I'd like to be a little more efficient than that. But that's the reason why I do that, because then I have more of a... Uh, more of an advantage in those kinds of situations because the auto resolve as as far as I'm aware at least does take into account Whether you have built these kinds of defenses, so it really makes a huge difference Anyway, we're going to be just taking all of these prisoners right there And we're going to be turning right around doing a whole 180 and attacking these guys that have been attempting to Pursue us across the entirety of the land. Thank you very much you are an, uh, uh, these, 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 look at these guys they're absolute scoundrels look at them they're now running away from me in every single direction and they are just much too fast for me because I cannot catch them I can catch this guy though I think I, I'm, I should be able to catch him yes as you can see I'm 0.1 faster than this one so there we go nice take the prisoners and take the loot and that's basically what we can do that's it that's pretty much all we can do right now because they are otherwise going to continue hounding me but i just need to wait for my disorganized state to wear off and then i can hopefully get them come on if, I, if only i could just get more of them in in the fight then this would make everything much much easier for me but unfortunately that uh that will not happen with such a large army. Oh, we're making peace with the Crusade now. Hmm. Yes. Who would have who would have expected it? Who would have expected that? I certainly did. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll definitely say yes to that because I I just can't be bothered fighting them. They they are so incredibly frustrating to try and chase after as well. I mean, it is to be expected that a large army shouldn't be able to catch up to a small party, but I think that's the reason why some of these mods that are out allow you to slow down enemy parties when you have pursued them for a certain period of time. And that really makes a huge difference in my opinion. I've never used one of those before, but I was considering getting one for this series. Not right now, but when it first started, I was thinking, you know what, maybe it would make sense. Because from a realistic standpoint, if you chase an enemy army, over hostile terrain or something as they are attempting to raid one of your villages or something but they just happen to be 0.1 faster than you you can never quite catch up to them but if they get tired if their horses get tired if they're primarily con concerned with you know their own infantry's health then they're going to have to stop and rest from a realistic standpoint that is and well it would make sense for them to slow down then wouldn't it so yeah that's the kind of thing that i was um contemplating but yeah I don't know whether it really makes any difference right now okay so there you go we had a pretty large battle with the Kuzate I'm actually super surprised that they decided to make peace with us I mean look at their strength right now it's absolutely insane they're going to be giving us tribute every day oh, wait a minute we are giving we are we are giving them Tribute. <sighs> I thought it was tribute to us, not away. <laughs> oh no, why? Oh well. It happens, you know, it happens. Okay, whoa. Look at this. Oh wow, look at this vassal. This, that is insanity. 275? Yeah, so Hell Castle is going to come under siege, by the way. It's one of my own. But Hubyar is right here, which I would love to be able to take. So we're just going to go in manually against this particular person because it is indeed a Tetsujin defector. Now, bear in mind that because she is a defector, she is primarily using Azurai units, and that is pretty much it. She's not using anything else. She's got a very small contingent of Tetsujin units, so I shouldn't have to feel too bad about absolutely slaughtering every single one of them. So let's see what I can do here. Basically, what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to try and get over here. No, 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 no. Don't shoot, don't shoot. Thank you, don't shoot me. Let's get over here. There we go. And let's get my cavalry. I have a lot of horse archers. Not too many regular cavalry, unfortunately. Might need to try and rectify that. 
Okay, it's a bit it's a bit different fighting the Azurai in comparison to fighting the Kuzate. I wanted to actually get off my mount and do a little bit of crossbow action because it's been a while since I've done any kind of crossbow firing. So it would be quite cool to maybe level that up a little bit. Oh yeah, I actually hit someone? Really? I did not expect that. Nice. Even if it's just a little bit. I don't really care, you know? Just really want to get some damage out. Oh, a headshot. Really? Wow. Good work, Byron. Good work. All right, so we're just going to be telling these guys to charge in, tell these guys, tell these guys, and we'll just leave the archers where they are. They seem to be in a pretty decent place. Hit my own guy. Of course I do. Yes. Uh, that, uh, you know what? I'm not even surprised anymore, to be honest. <laughs> that guy was surprised. That's for sure. He was like, ah, this guy's oblivious to me. He doesn't see where I am. He doesn't know about anything that's happening. And I'm like, yeah, very true. You know? And then all of a sudden, boom. Complete 180 and not a headshot, but I did take him out. So that was, that was pretty good. Not bad. That guy was going way too fast uh, in a horizontal angle. Okay, we're going to tell the archers to charge in now. And I'm going to get on here. And I'm going to do a little bit of pokey pokey action. And then I might get off and try to do some one-handed dueling if I can. I don't know how effective that's going to be without a significant amount of athletic skill. Because, of course, I don't really have very good athletics at the moment. This guy's got a polar. Really? Wow. That's pretty good. Anytime they have a pole arm, you've got to be careful, you know. They're going to just stop you in your tracks like they did just to me. And that's usually a death sentence, pretty much, you know. That's usually complete death. As soon as... I like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't have one episode without me dying. I think it is literally just a... Um, it's a feature. It's a feature. You know what they should do? Literally, on the Bannerlord Steam page, they should literally put note. And this is at the bottom, obviously. Or warning. There we go, yes. Warning. This game comes with the requirement that Reformist dies every single battle. Yeah, I mean, every single episode, shall we say. Haha. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is literally a feature now. I feel like it should be implemented. And uh, that's it. You know, no link to my channel, no nothing, just literally that. That's that's all that it needs because, c come on now. I am a master at dying in probably some of the worst possible situations. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. All right, well, whatever the case, there we go. We were able to defeat her for some reason. I don't even know how that happened. I mean... I, I mean, obviously, we outnumber her by such a dramatic margin, but still. Anyway, Hubyar is looking mighty, mighty attractive right now. So I think we're probably going to try and take that while they are dealing with Sahel Castle. Because as you can see, Sahel Castle actually has a pretty decent garrison. So I think by the time they take that, Hubyar will be down to its last dregs of defense. And then we're going to be able to get in there and take it without too many difficulties. At least I hope so. But we're going to have to see about that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.